Hey everybody, this is Dan from Mechanical Malarkey. Today I have another engine teardown video. This is a Honda J35A9 out of a first generation Honda Ridgeline. They are single overhead cam with VTEC on the intake side. These do not have variable cylinder management. This particular engine is out of a Ridgeline that got towed into the shop last winter after it slid off the road and went nose first into a pond and sucked up a bunch of water. Once we got it in the shop, the tech that was working on it took the intake off and there was ice in the intake. So normally getting water or other liquids in your engine will break things. And then that additional freezing of that water probably did it no favors. I tried turning this over with a breaker bar and it would not move. So there might be something actually broken in there or it's just rusted from all that water. So let's take this apart. First, we'll take the intake off. As you can see, most of these bolts are already missing because parts have already been pirated off this a little bit, like this valve cover someone needed at the shop. So, just one nut I stuck on there for transport. And just one 12 holding this on. Because you have to remove the intake to get the valve cover off, so this has already been off. I'm going to leave these lower intake pieces on until I take the heads off, or if I feel like taking them off, because I don't really need to take them off to get the valve covers off or anything, and it's easier when the heads are off the engine. Now I will take off the timing on the front. All right, now I take the timing belt setup off. Pretty simple, just take off the pulley and the covers and go from there. I've done a lot of these. I've done a lot of J35 timing belts. So I've got my Extra heavy socket for the crank bolt. Usually they come off, even with my little home compressor here. Hmm. All right, so this crank pulley is not coming off, at least not with the air compressor I have here, which is surprising. I've been able to get other ones off. So I guess we'll be doing this the dirty way and cutting the belt from the top. Most of these bolts are gone for some reason. The belt is intact, so that means that's a good bit of slack. And over there feels fine, but this is should not be moving that much. That is interesting. Everything else is nice and tight except for this one section here. A lot of slack there. Let's see if I can pop off the tensioner without actually removing the covers. It's untensioned now, but some of this might just be from it sitting outside all year, even though I had it wrapped up, but I'm looking forward to taking off these heads, see what's in there. pretty rusty which would make sense because the whole front end was submerged there was pond greenery hanging off this thing yeah everything is way rusted up in here that's why it's somehow still tensioned even though there's no tensioner there we go now it's really slack and I think the head might have rotated. All right. See if I can get this mount off. That one has a strut block on it. Alright, I 
won't have to cut the belt because I got enough slack here to pull it off. Yeah, when the pulleys are rusty, that means it's been wet. Yeah, now it popped. Rotated because it was no longer being held by the belt in position. All right, now you get ready to take the heads off. Realized I never checked if there's any oil in it, so I'm gonna drain it real quick just to be sure before I start flipping the engine over. I have no idea if the tech drained this before you replaced it. Oh. Yeah, that's some water. Yeah, that's not good for your engine when there's water like that. Surprised it is that separated out though. A lot of times that'll mix up when the oil make you a milkshake. Yeah, that's looking a little soupy. Or milkshakey. A little thicker than usual. All right, while the milkshake continues to dribble out the drain plug, I'll take this valve cover off. good places to pry on this thing. There we go. Well, this side doesn't quite look as varnished as the other side, interestingly. Not sure why that would be. It right, looks like the oil's almost done, so now I can tilt the engine and loosen these head bolts. All right, before I start taking the heads off, I have to take this water passage off the back. Get this EGR valve out of the way. Looks like all of it, and I don't know if this is going to make a mess or not, but there might still be coolant in here. It's not really a place I can catch any coolant either, so this will be fun. Yep, there's some in there. What is it? Oh yeah, it's stuck on the crossover pipe in the middle, that's what. There we go. Yeah, there's coolant in there. All right, time to turn it on its side so I can easily loosen these head bolts. Now for the other side, you've seen this side, so I don't need to show you that side, same thing basically. Guess what, there's coolant in there. It's on my floor now. All right, got them loose, time to take the bolts out. I miss these two.
That's a lot of head bolts. All right, time for the big moment. Time to take off this head. Guess what, more coolant. Someday I'll be ready for the mess that an engine makes. All right, here we go. Of course, the fuel hose is still connected. And the knock sensor. There we go. Wow. Now I can see why I couldn't turn the engine over. Look at how rusty it is in there. The giant rust ridge. I think I might have budged it a little bit when trying to take that crank pulley off. It's hard to tell if anything's, if any rods are bent. That's what usually happens when you hydro lock an engine. So I'll probably have to take off the pan to get an idea of if anything's actually damaged like that. All right, time for the other head. Time to make more mess. There we go. Yeah, I should catch it in my drain pan, but uh, whatever. I made a mess. Why are there always wires still connected? Looks like more water got into this cylinder than the other, so it's way rustier. It's like this one, that one, and then this one. I don't know if it walked up that quickly. That swallowed the water or what. Man, those cylinders are destroyed. So these two cylinders, they don't look that bad. I mean, rusty. But then this one, this one definitely had water in it for quite a while. It's rustier than the other ones. This one's just all rust. All right, time to flip it, make even more of a mess, and see if I can tell if any rods are bent. All right, now before I take the pan off, I have to move where I have it mounted on here under these holes over here, hopefully. Nice big mess. At least I have a pan this time. All right, time to remove the pan. Nice big spot to pry right there. So I got the oil pickup and windage tray off and none of the rods look bent, at least not any noticeable mount. So probably what happened is they went off the road in the water, sucked up the water, stalled, 
and it never started again so the water just sat in there and rusted up the cylinders and that's all that's seized. The rods may all be fine but you'd have to do a lot of cleaning in those cylinders to clean that up. So I forgot to bring a 12.10 mil socket so I can't actually remove any of these. So I think I've seen all I need to see. Obviously it's partly junk. It could be fixed if you wanted to take it apart and clean all those cylinders, put new pistons in, but it's a common engine. It's not worth it. So I'm going to put it back together so I can scrap it. And that does it for this engine teardown video. No major damage, but some impressive rust in those cylinders. If you liked the video, please like, comment, subscribe to the channel, follow me on social media, on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and read the blog at mechanicalmalarkey.com. Thanks for watching.